Welcome back, everybody. We're going to uh, do one for all you Florida folks, Louisiana folks, people down south, anyhow. I'll do us a little gator on the fishing trips. Hope you enjoy. Uh, well, the first thing we do here, we try to take this plug off, and you see it kind of goes down in between his eyes and his hat there. So I'm just kind of chunking it out of there, having to dig down on his eyes a little bit, and separating his hat from his head here just a tad. There's a little bit of that plug that's on top of his hat. Uh, they're kind of raking down, lowering. And they're drawing around his clothes. That's his collar on his jacket. Or his vest. It's kind of there. His fishing vest. This is a strap that runs down to his tackle box. Kind of cutting his hand away from his body. He'll be holding the fishing pole there, but that's where there's a little bit of wood that sticks in between his hand and his body. He can separate it out a little bit if you want to. Cutting his sleeve on his vest. Cutting his toes apart over on his tackle box or fishing creel. It could be either a tackle box or a creel box. Drawing his bottom feet toes in, give him some toenails. Now separating him from the base. His tail, that's his tail comes around front. Work on his tail there. Get a little detail on that front side. The back side usually got a lot of detail in it, but the front. Usually a little shallow, so I cut it a little bit deeper. He's uh, getting ready to put his mouth in. Drawing on his eyes, kind of separating his eyes from the. He's got big, tall eyes on his eyelids there, so. We're just taking the saw and separating them a little bit. And as you see, he's using the old battery saw, which you know, works really good for the rough outs. Got a couple of them there now that I use. You can come in. The weather, whether it's cold or hot, these batteries last about, I don't know, 30 minutes or so of hard work. Uh, and if you got a couple of batteries, uh, they'll be charged up before they uh, run out, you know, so you can keep a hot one if you got two batteries. If you only got one, a lot of times I run one dead and then use a gas saw for a few minutes and it ain't but a few minutes and it charged back up. We are put, having to put a little bit of detail on the front of his tail there because uh, it's a little bit shallow. So I just go in and cut it a little bit deeper. Just making some scale like, you know, a gator tail got the big high fins, but you can't make them too big or they'll break off. If whatever works for you. He's spun around, we're gonna separate his, the backside, his collar a little bit. That's his strap that runs to the Creole basket. Yeah, he has a, like a fishing jacket, and uh, here we are undercutting the, ha uh, the jacket from his body. So he ain't got no pants on, but he do have a jacket on. Here he's trying to separate the Creole basket from everything, his hand and his jacket. 
knocking some of the fuzz off the, the base with the saw. Okay, that look right about what we've done with the saw there. We got our big uh, saber bit. This is a yellow saber flame. We work really good for cleaning these, these rough outs up. Uh, you have to take all that fuzz off without actually taking a lot of the, the main wood away. So I like I like these yellow bits a whole lot for cleaning cleaning these uh, rough outs up as far as getting rid of the fuzz. They do a real good job because you know they don't work good in green wood, but these rough outs done been dried, so you know they don't load your bit up like they would with green wood, but you can see it just, they're pretty much taking all that fuzz right off. And you can use a green bit too, but a green bit would leave a lot a lot of lines in it, or the orange bit would even leave a lot more. So that's why I like the, the fine bits. You know, they don't, you don't mark it up very much. Now there's sometimes I do get some of the coarser one for when I want texture you can draw you know use the actual teeth of the cutter to put texture in a direction that you want like fine fur or something so you know there's a I guess a time to use any of them but as far as cleaning the just fuzz off I do like the fine bit because they don't uh, they don't carved the wood away too easy. Let's see if we can't wake him up. You know, they don't seem to ever come alive until you put eyes on them. You know, whenever you put eyes on them, that changes the whole, whole look of the piece. You can get some nose holes there so you can start breathing. Here I am, I'm just using that to put a little texture on his face. Uh, you can do it with a saw. You can not even do it, or you can, you know, you know I like to use whatever tool I got in my hand a lot of times. You know, you, once you learn what you want to do, you'll find that there's not necessarily one tool you got to have. You know, you can use lots of different tools to do the same job. It's just, uh, I guess the main thing is, is learning what you want to do, and then after you use a bit a while, you'll learn what all type stuff it can do. So, like I say, the reason I'm using a particular tool a lot of times is maybe it was like this is the eye tool. I started out with it for an eye. This type of bit can be used for cutting grooves and, you know, just separating toes, lines, and all, you know, with one tool because the less times you have to set a tool down to get another one, it just saves you time at the end of the day. So now I'm fixing to give him a hole through his hand so he can hold that fishing pole. I'm gonna drill too hard, too quick, especially if you're drilling with a dull bit. You can go in there and pressurize that wood too quick and blow it apart. So I like to drill slow, pull out my chips, and the way I know I ain't over pressure in the hand, I don't wanna break it, break it off. So. It takes your time, drill through it, and then this one right here actually has a knot in his hand, so you know you want to be even extra close there, careful. We're through, so and uh, usually I'll put a little divot down in the base so the bottom of that fishing pole have a place to sit and not fall out. Cleaning the base up a little bit now. Well, that's pretty much it on that. We're gonna get the old nylon brush out, wipe him down a little bit. Main thing about these nylon brushes is make sure they are one directional. Make sure all the bristles on it lean one direction, and you want to make sure it, it's spinning in the direction that they're leaning. If you go the other way, you'll wear out your brush real quick, and it, you can tell it won't be. It won't be smooth when you're holding it, it'll be kind of bouncy bouncy. 
So you be running the wrong way, and that's that'll wear your brush out real quick. So that that is one thing to remember with these brushes here is that they are one direction. We're gonna take some fire and see if we can't color him up a little bit. We'll burn the gator, probably leave his jacket kind of light and stuff, his belly a little bit lighter. It's all about separation, I guess. You know, that's the main thing, shadows and light. If you burn it, we're gonna color these with stains and we'll get more of a separation when we use our colors. If you're using fire, you, it's just pretty much a dark and light. You're hunting, leave light, you know, certain parts light, certain parts dark. Just, you know, whatever, make them stand out away from each other real good. Well, here's just a sand of flex and soften all that burn back up. Because, like I say, we're going to stain this one. So, uh, that would really just to get rid of some of that fuzz that we didn't quite get off. Well, that's it for the carving. Well, except for I didn't drill that hole in the bottom yet, so. This is where I usually drill a little divot in the base so that thing won't slide out of there. We we'll get around painting him in a little bit, but uh, as far as carving and stuff goes, that's him. I thought we'd kind of go over the stuff that we use basically on coloring our carvings here. Our main things, I got some dyes here that I made by Mixall that you can mix with just about anything. I use basically water for the 90% of it, mix you know the dye with water. It's real easy to keep clean in my airbrush. But what I probably use even more than the colors is men wax stain. I like gold note, it's probably my favorite light color. And then I use ventional and black walnut for my dark colors. Men wax make hundreds of different colors. I basically use two, 90% of what I do. And as far as airbrush system, I got cheap Harbor Freight airbrush, or you can get them on eBay. Well, that's about what we use for coloring our carvings. Hope this helped. Okay, we got our black walnut out again. We uh, getting ready to just start laying in our shadows. So it's pretty much like all the other videos is if look for a low spot, go in and lay in a little dark color and just a lot of drawing. It's pretty, pretty much what you're doing. Where you ran a saw at or a tool at, just go in with your uh, uh, dark colors and it makes everything pop back out and if you want you can just uh, if you want a black and white model which I do a lot of uh, you can just stop right here with your stains Once we get all the low spots drawn in, we'll uh, get our green out and uh, go over the whole thing and it's just mix all dye mixed with water. Now you can mix it with uh, about anything. Mix all mixes with all kinds of medium, but uh, water is just easy to keep clean. So I use it with water a lot. But we lay the green down, then we get uh, a little bit of yellow in the front, uh, up under his belly and neck. We get all that laid down. We I think we took a little gold note uh, in the big sprayer and give it a, 
of dusting over his jacket hat, just kind of tan it down a little bit. And uh, that was about it for this one. And uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And we'll see you on the next one. Happy carving.